Welcome to Creating Happiness. If you're looking for ways to find happiness and freedom, you've come to the right place. I am Steph, and this is Sheila. Hello. Hello. So today we have a juicy, juicy topic. Five ways to let go of fear. Yeah, it's a huge topic, actually. So we are going to attempt to sort of brush the surface of fear in general, rather than looking at specific fears. Mm. We'll obviously give some as examples. But, but, but what, what are your fears? What are your fears holding you back from? Are they holding you back from being happy? And we, we're going to look at five different ways that you can let go so that we can take another step into that juicy creating happiness yeah exciting yeah it is indeed a huge topic especially right now in this world we are bombarded with fears from left and right so we've got our own fears plus the ones that we find our, around ourselves so i think it's a very good skill to be able to deal with fear oh, definitely and you know find a way to make it i'm not saying overcome it because perhaps that's a bit too much <laughs> but um Find a way to work with it and make it less potent, let's say. So we do all have fears, don't we, Sheila? Absolutely. And some of those fears are actually inbuilt into our mm. genetics, if you like, because they keep us safe. So we might be afraid of snakes or spiders or grizzly bears, which are it's inbuilt in us because those sort of creatures can cause us harm yeah um but we're going to be looking at the ways the fears that stop us from achieving what we want to achieve in life and stop us living uh, or stop us from feeling paralyzed about moving forward how we want to to create yeah. more happiness exciting mm. yeah so first of all we we kind of need to think about well where do these fears come from Hmm. It all it always kind of comes down with uh, to the parents and to our learned behaviors. Yes, we grow up with, you know, two parents who have their own fears, their own baggage of fears that they have inherited from their parents. Yeah, we we absolutely we pick up their their fears. So they may not some of our fears may not be really from us. Yeah, but it's because we've been taught to be afraid of whatever exactly and it doesn't have to be something like your mom tells you oh be careful of spiders mm -hmm. it, be, it it often is something that you have just observed them doing like mm -hmm. Sheila said mm -hmm. uh, for example my mom was once chased down by a cow when she was a child <laughs> oh she shouldn't laugh because that's that could be quite frightening <laughs> I know it? right <laughs> cows are a lot bigger than us <laughs> <laughs> but still it's, it's yes. I shouldn't be laughing but it's kind of funny <laughs> So, um, yeah, she was just roaming around. The, she used to spend her uh, summer holidays with her grandparents in the Alps. I'm from northern Italy. So she had some lung issues and the doctors at the time said, oh, you have to spend time in the, in the mountains for the fresh air. So she was quite adventurous and she went wandering this field full of cows and one of them was like, hello, no, you're not coming here. So she chased her down. My mom managed to jump the fence. Or, but, you know, since then... She's wary of cows, mm. and I myself am very careful how close I go to cows. Mm. 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 But something you said earlier really caught my attention because you said something about our, our carer or our mum will, will often say, oh, don't do that, be careful, be careful, don't walk too... I, in fact, I can remember myself saying that to my oh, children. Yeah? They would be walking along the side of the quay. We lived by the coast, yeah. so we'd have a quay... Um, and it was a sheer drop down into the water. So it seemed perfectly logical to me as a young mum, don't get too near the edge, come back, come back. Consequently, you instil a, f a sense of fear of adventure yeah. even, and never mind the water, <laughs> but uh, a sense of yourself. You, you take that away from children. Yeah. And of course, we need to make sure our children are safe. I'm not suggesting that you... Don't you say know, anything. Don't say anything, but maybe... But but sometimes that's where some of our fears do come from because we're yeah. repeatedly told not to do something or to be careful. Yeah. Be careful, you'll drop that. Oh my God, yes. And consequently, we, we often... Well, it, in Italy, you know, I don't know if you know, know anything about Italian mums, 
No, not really. Tell me. They are quite protective, overprotective. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So they will, you know, create little stories, little scary stories to stop you from doing whatever they think is dangerous. Mm-hmm. So, for example, a friend of mine, we, she's like my sister. She, we love each other to bits. And her mom is specifically fearful of people kidnapping children. So she brought them up, telling them that anyone that, you know, they don't know or that uh, looks a bit different or, you know, is not basically people that are not their direct family could be kidnappers. So these children grew up with a fear of being kidnapped. Mm -hmm. How crazy, right? Mm. It's not funny, but it's kind of, you know. So my mom as well came up with a little story. I was a bit naughty as a child, I must say. I was always like... No, really? (laughs) I definitely gave my mom some some fun, <laughs> yeah, fun times. And uh, yeah, so she would tell me these little stories to scare me. Mm-hmm. And I still, you know, I had to actually go to counseling to overcome these fears mm-hmm. and these little, I know that they're not real, mm-hmm. but uh, still. Yeah, it's an interesting concept in our brain when we look, we can logicalize the fact that it's not real. Yeah. But it doesn't change the subconscious mind mm-hmm. from pro- the program of fear around kidnapping. Exactly. For example. Yeah. So it's a really, that's a really good example about how we take on someone else's fear. We, mm-hmm. We're taught very often to be afraid of what, what our parents are afraid of. Yeah. So, yeah, amazing. Um, Yeah, but so we know we have all these fears, but how do they actually hold us back from achieving happiness? Whoa, well, we get filled with anxiety and stress and everything, don't we? Mm. We're going to put off living. Yeah. We're going to avoid those things that that may come up in everyday life and, and we can sort of shrink back from life. Yeah. We also procrastinate. Yeah, that's a big one. You know, we we avoid doing something yeah. if it's going to cause us fear. And that's a reaction of our subconscious brain mm. because our, our subconscious brain or our ego will say, oh, no, 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 no. Bad idea. You, you don't want to clean out that cupboard because there might be spiders in there <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, or, um, you know, no, we're not going to go for a walk by the river because... Um, my child might fall in. Mm. So we we put off having life. Yeah. And and if we put off life, we're going to we're not going to be able to find and create our own happiness. Mm. Yeah. It's it's interesting, isn't it, how we we almost go into a freeze type of scenario in our brain in these moments where we decide not to do something. Yes. Yeah, but, absolutely. And and all of that really it leads to having a head full of scary thoughts. Yeah. Which is like we said, it's they're often not real. Mm-hmm. We just make up this castle in our in our mind. Mm-hmm. I used to suffer from a lot of fears, mm-hmm. and uh, at the time, I couldn't really tell if something was real or not. No, uh, and that's because the body doesn't. The body reacts exactly the same way yeah. to a thought as it does to a real life situation. And if you if you think about this, let's put it in a positive way. Yeah. So if if you think about something from your past that was incredibly happy Mm. and take a moment here to think about that time it could be a birthday party it could be uh, a special day it could be a a gift that you received it's only a moment but if you step into that in your mind you've done it yes because my pastry shop (laughs) oh yeah, yeah so but what happens is that your what I saw with Steph is that suddenly her face softened, her eyes sparkled, you had a big smile because your body did not know that you weren't there. Mm. So you you were actually experiencing that oh, in a lovely way. But the same applies to a negative. So if we constantly thinking about fear, our body or things that are fearful to us, our body thinks we're actually there. So it produces the same kind of hormones and fear reactors as if you were really faced with that grizzly bear or that spider or mm. the water or cats or whatever it is that you're afraid of. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. It's, it's fascinating. very powerful. Oh, yeah. Very indeed. 
But before we move on, we talked about the ego earlier. Yeah. And I thought it would be interesting to just mention. There is a lot of talk around about getting rid of the ego. Mm -hmm. But that is not an option. And why would we? I thought that because I'm quite a spiritual person and I am really interested in, you know, how how to develop myself on many levels. Um, and then actually Sheila mentioned it to me. She said, you have to work with the ego, make friends with it. Mm -hmm. I think that's very powerful mm -hmm. because, of course, the ego is here to protect us. Isn't yes, it? yes. And if you try and get rid of ego, if you imagine him or it as a thing, a person or an object or a, an animal, which mm. is how I imagine, imagine my ego, um, we need to we need to be friends with it. But, but equally, the ego is there to safeguard us through life. Yeah. For example, if we want to run across the road urgently, our ego will say, whoa, hang on a minute. Mm. Just check that there's not a big bus coming along. That's our ego. Yeah. Um, we're not talking about, well, of course, ego is also about saying, you know, taking it to a, a different extreme of, I, I want to be better than my next door neighbor and because, you know, I, I need to feel good. and My yeah. ego needs to be boosted. Mm -hmm. That's also ego. Or uh, it could be telling you, oh, you're not as good as your neighbor. Sure. It's the same part yeah. of you, isn't it? But the core, the core thing about ego is it's there to protect us. Yeah. We are not going to put our hand into boiling water to to for any reason. Yeah. Because our ego will say, whoa, that's a bad idea. Mm. <laughs> and that, that kind of links with some of the fears that we've talked about earlier, yeah. because we are we have fears that are good and healthy. Yeah. Like boiling water. You don't want to put your hand in boiling no, water don't do or that. in a fire. Do not do that. No. <laughs> so what we're talking about here are those those fears that are not really ours and uh, do not serve a purpose. Yeah. From a logical point of view. Yeah. And we can identify that by thinking, well, it's, what's the evidence for this to be life-threatening? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the bottom line. We can use our mm. mind in that way to logicalize and come to the bottom of saying, what's the evidence? Yes. But we'll talk about this in the, in the tips. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we, if we've got this fear, so... We need to kind of be able to manage it. And let, how do we let go of it? Well, we have a few tips lined up from, uh, to talk about this. But I would, I would like to say that really to let go of fear is extremely liberating. Mm -hmm. It's like taking a huge backpack of rocks off your shoulders. <laughs> yes. We like to go around with those, don't we? Yes, don't we just? And, you know, it's... When you think about all the fears in your rucksack or your bag on your back, think how heavy it is. Oh my God. And how, even if you just took two or three out, how amazing would that feel? If you could manage to put down the whole bag of rocks. Wow. Think wow. about how free and, and light and easy and flowing that you would feel yeah. and therefore more happy. Absolutely. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, before we step into the tips... We mentioned it already in a previous episode, but uh, we, why are we, you know, another reason why we're often afraid is because we worry about the future, don't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. And that's not really productive mm -hmm. because the only real moment that you have is the now moment. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes this sounds a bit cheesy because you're like, well, I've got the bills to pay next month. But really, if you managed, if we all managed for let's say 20% of our day, to step into the now and to focus on that, the fear of the future really, really drops to a minimum level. Mm -hmm. And we find, uh, that that's uh, at least my experience, that whatever bill I have to pay, I'll find a solution that I wouldn't have found if I was in fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, because when you think about it, when we spend too much time thinking about the future, creates anxiety yeah. in us always so thinking about the bill that you've got to pay next month if you you know if you think about it a lot you're going to get very anxious about it yeah the remedy is to always come back to this moment yeah always 
Whenever you find yourself worrying about the future or becoming anxious about the future, just take a breath. Yeah. It always works. <laughs> it always works. <laughs> yes. So talking about the tips, we've got five five tips that we can we can use every day to overcome fear. So would you like to give us the first tip, Sheila? Yeah. Uh, but before we do, I just want to say one thing just yeah. to sort of sum up what we've said so sure. far, and that is fear and happiness cannot coexist in mm. that moment. So in any moment, which is life is a series of now moments, yep. we can't have fear and happy at the same time. We're either happy or we're fearful or something else, but we can't have fear and happiness at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing really is to identify your fear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We need to find out what is it that we are afraid of? I think that's really important. When I used to suffer from fear, I was kind of like in a state of, was like a, a lingering feeling. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really sure what I was afraid of in that moment. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's just really easy to find yourself not knowing what you're afraid of. And obviously that, that holds you back. I mean, how does it hold you back? You know, if we if we can... Um, identify your, the fear that you have and start thinking about how that holds you back from doing whatever it is that you want to do to create more happiness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it is, unless you find out what it is that you're afraid of and find out what is holding you, what what is this fear holding you back from, mm -hmm. you, you might spend your whole life just not doing things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the next thing is to learn how that fear actually affects you. And I mean in terms of your physical body. So mm -hmm. when we are faced with a fear, whether it's real or remembered or imaginary, <laughs> um, certain things happen. So we have a fight or flight response. And yeah. we, kn we know this because you, when we're faced with that fear, our body pumps adrenaline into our system because we might need to fight or we might need to run away. Well, that's absolutely, you know, I don't really remember which bear is where, but there is, if it's brown, lay down. If it's white, I don't remember. I pro apologize to any listeners <laughs> who actually know about bears. But, um, you know, there are certain bears where if you, if you actually get, very close to one you have to lie down and pretend you're dead right so you have to wow how on earth would you do that i right? don't think i would be able to lie down and pretend to be dead no no i'd probably run yeah which is probably the worst thing to yes, do yes exactly <laughs> so, yeah so yeah that you know in that moment you your response would be flight yes but you better not do that mm -hmm. so it's really important to know in which response you're falling to then know what to do in the situation But that's, I don't know why I'm telling this story, really. But Well, it's interesting because what you're asking us to do is to go into a third response, which is freeze. Oh, yeah. And these, these responses are automatic. Mm. They happen without any thought. So if we're confronted with, you know, say, for example, we step off the pavement, we, we forgot to look and mm -hmm. there's, there's actually a, a vehicle coming very close to us. We, <gasps> we, yeah. we, we leap back with unbelievable energy. Yeah. You know, there've been stories of mothers lifting a car to allow the son to escape from a fallen jack that's yeah. fallen on them. They'll actually lift a car up with their own physical body weight. Amazing strength that we have when we are pumped with adrenaline. adrenaline. But the, the important thing to think about is that these have a physical effect on our body. So yeah. when we... Um, begin to notice how fear affects us. Is your heart beating hard? Are you sweating? Are you feeling uh, a bit muddle-headed? Or are you filled with energy that you want to punch a wall or, 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 or do something very, very physical? Yeah. And that gives you the, f the fight or flight response. With the freeze response, it's a little bit different because, well, 
Have you ever driven down a road and you've seen a little bunny rabbit on the mm. side of the road? Often they will just freeze. Yeah. They don't move. They don't run away. They're just in the middle of the road in your headlights. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, they're going to get squashed. Yeah. Because they have no fight or flight. They're just freeze. And how that affects us is that we also freeze in the same way sometimes. Mm. If we, um, you know, if we're confronted with especially trauma, childhood trauma leaves us feeling frozen. Yeah. And that frozenness, is that even a word? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> that frozenness can last a lifetime. And we may not yeah. be um, able to identify it very well. Yes, for example, uh, if you've been um, talked to in a really aggressive way when you were, a chi you were a child and you find yourself freezing when anyone confronts you, you're probably in the frozen state. Yes. Which is, it is the interesting one because it is really quite difficult to get yourself out of it on your own. Yes, it is. And, you know, thinking about our podcast, mostly they're lighthearted and chatty and, and yeah. that's lovely and we enjoy doing that. But this is, this bit is really, really important. If you think that you have any frozenness in your life, please do seek some professional help. Yeah. Because it is very difficult to even recognize that you're in frozen Ness. We have created a new word here. Um, but you do please find a life coach or a counselor so that you can discover what it is that you're frozen with in a safe environment with yeah, a professional. Absolutely. Do not never ever be alone with your fears or with, with, with thoughts that are too difficult to confront. Mm -hmm. mm. There is lots of people who Probably, you know, often we feel like we are the only ones, yes. but it's really not the case. All of us have fears. Mm. Sheila and I have fears. Mm. Not like we're like running on a cloud, fearless. No, absolutely. And the other thing to add is that when, we, when we're in that um, fight, flight or freeze response, our frontal lobe of our brain stops. It mm. shuts down. We don't process anything. Yeah. And that's why a couple of days later, we look back and we say, oh, I wish I'd said this or I wish I'd done that because it all seems very logical now and very easy to analyze if you, yeah. you know, whatever happened, an argument or ha or something happened and you responded in a fight, flight or freeze response. A couple of days later, it all seems, oh, I could have said this, I could have said that. And The reason for that is that your brain is now engaged. Yeah. <laughs> and you can process it. <laughs> it's really that simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. We haven't changed our responses to fear since we were cave people. Well, yeah, it's it's quite interesting, though, mm. how we've got all this technological advancement. Yeah. But still, we have our genetical traits that are still the same as yeah. they yeah. were at the beginning. Mm -hmm. mm. So... Step three, then, is challenge your belief about the fear. So what's the evidence? Mm -hmm. If you're afraid of spiders and maybe you're afraid the fear is if a spider bites me, I'll die mm -hmm. and you live in England, mm -hmm. what's the evidence that the spider will actually kill you? Mm -hmm. Probably very small. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Finding evidence for fear-based reactions is a really powerful thing to do. Yeah. It takes a few moments of thinking about it, but it's well worth it. Absolutely yeah. well worth it. Write down what the evidence is to base, you know, to how, how to base on your fears. Because, like you say, the chances are it's so remote. I mean, there might be a spider that would bite you in England that will cause you a little irritation on your skin but we're very fortunate as far as I'm aware we don't have killer spiders in England yeah it's um, for example I'm talking about the spider because I'm quite afraid of poisonous spiders so I the way this fear for holds me back is I'm not going to go to Australia because I just I can't bear the thought that <laughs> <laughs> I might just find myself in front of one of these <laughs> Yeah, even I heard that even small spiders that are as small as a fingernail are deadly. But you see, I can tell that when while you're talking, you have gone into fear already. Yeah. And the spider that you're confronting is at least six foot tall. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and big hairy legs. And you've had to c- bring yourself back to explain this tiny spider of your fingernail because for you, that spider's six foot tall. Correct. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So your body's responding as if Mm -hmm. we had a big spider here right now. God, no, I need to go back to the pastry shop right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So that's that's an important, important step. Yeah. Find the evidence. Does the evidence back up your fear? If it does, perhaps you're quite right and quite justified to have that fear. It's a healthy fear. So if we have a fear of grizzly bears, you're probably quite right to have a fear of grizzly bears or tigers or something that yeah. the evidence will show that you, you're right to be afraid. But we're talking about fears of um, being kidnapped or fears of being broken into in your, in your house. Do you go around and have a worry about whether you've locked all the doors and the windows? So if that's really stopping you from relaxing and having a good night's sleep, Find the evidence. What's the evidence? How many, how many um, people in your area are broken into? Yeah, or kidnapped. <laughs> or kidnapped. And you'll find that those figures are very, very, very small. I'm not mm. saying it's, it's not impossible, but it's very, very small. Yeah. So just lock your door and go to bed. Exactly. And yeah. have a, a lovely, relaxing sleep. Oh, oh, I love that. I love sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> So the fourth way that we've we've got for yeah. you is to learn to relax. This is, comes on nicely about going to bed and sleeping. Yes. But we can learn to relax. Mm. Um, it doesn't always come easy to everyone to, to know what relaxation is. Mm-hmm. But I like to give an example between, say, um, a deer, you know, a deer that's yeah. skitting around and a cat. Hmm. And if you look at a cat, it just knows how to relax. Oh, my God, yes. I love cats. Even if you compare cats and dogs, dogs will relax, but they're always on a little bit of alert. Yeah. They've always, they're always tuned into a, a little bit of tension. Yeah. But a cat knows how to relax. It doesn't care. Yeah. It will stretch out in front of the fire or hang over the back of your sofa <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> But we can learn how to relax. Mm. We can teach ourselves. We can learn meditation, for example, or mindfulness. Yeah. And that's really about staying in the moment. Yes, that's super important. Because yeah. otherwise we just, we often find ourselves worrying about the future the entire time, don't we? Yeah. Um, so we basically stop living because we don't actually, we're not there to live mm. our lo- own life. Mm -hmm. Because we are just projected into the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, it's... Happiness is a series of moments. Yeah. So if we can create happiness in this moment, and this moment, and this moment, we're going to increase our happiness tenfold. Yes. A hundred times. Yeah. It's actually very powerful to just stop. Yes. Especially if you are in a... I'll give you an example. So, as you know, I'm from Italy. I, my mom came to visit me for a few days and then I dropped her off at Gatwick Airport. So they have a few buildings that are a few, a few several stories high uh, that are parking lots. And I parked my car and, went, and I went off to drop off my mom at the gate or something. So I come back and I think... Huh, I don't remember which building I put my car in. Mm-hmm. So what did I do? I panicked. And I stormed into one, one of the buildings, looked through all the floors and kind of like canvassed the entire place. And I just, I wasn't even thinking at that point. Mm-hmm. So after, let's say, an hour of doing this, and it was like, Imagine this, I'm a, quite a petite lady seeing these big buildings. It, it felt a little bit like the spider, you know, thinking, oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so after quite a long time looking, there I stand, because these buildings are all open, so you can see uh, through them. I stand and I see into the next building and there was my car. Mm. And I was like, great. So my lesson learned was... Next time, stop and breathe. Mm-hmm. Just take a breath 
tune in however you like to tune in with yourself. And I guarantee you, I would have found the car probably an hour earlier than I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because that t- takes us back to the the brain not doesn't function when we're in that fight, flight yeah. or freeze mode. So when we're panicking, we're that's another word for fearful. Yeah. So our brain's not going to logicalize. No, nope. you know, we can't think straight. We can't rationalize. The, 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 just to clarify, learn to relax. And you can then, you know, relax at will. You can relax in a moment. You yeah. can relax when you decide that you want to relax. Learn mindfulness or meditation. Join a meditation class in your area. Yeah. Take up yoga. That's another great way to mm. learn to relax, to allow your body to experience deep relaxation. Do you know some people find it very, very difficult to relax going back to the cat and deer yeah. scenario, some people are wired to always have tension in their body. I'm one of those people, actually. Yeah. So for me, I had to actually learn how to relax. So did I. I understand that very well. I can remember when I first took up yoga, you know, yep. and they're saying breathe into mm. the into the stretch. I'm thinking, what? I can, I can hardly <laughs> balance myself. Never mind breathe. <laughs> you know, it was. And then at the end, when we did the sort of shavasana, med, uh, the, the meditation at the end, that caused me more stress than the whole <laughs> yoga lesson. I'm thinking, I wanted to look round and make sure that, you know, I was safe, I yes. guess. And also that everyone else seemed to be zonked out yeah and i'm thinking this is so uncomfortable my back <laughs> hurts my feet hurt my shoulders hurt oh i'm supposed to be relaxing so you build up a, an anxiety <laughs> about not relaxing and i think some some of our listeners will be able to relate to that but i absolutely promise you you can learn to overcome that tension in yeah. your body and it's a wonderful thing because when you have learned it you can relax in a heartbeat. Exactly. It all comes down to letting go of high expectations, doesn't yes. it? Yes. We have a podcast about it. We do indeed. Um, you know, step, baby steps. Yes. Don't, re- don't ask yourself to relax for a whole hour. Start with a minute. Mm-hmm. Honestly, one minute and yeah. then two and then three and so on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So, yeah. And the last thing is absolutely, by all means, talk to someone Talk it through with your life coach. Find a counselor. Find somebody you trust, even a friend, your partner, if you don't feel like going to a life coach or a counselor. Because often, like you always say, Sheila, if you talk it through to someone, you get to hear it back. Yes, it's <laughs> so valuable. <laughs> you know, it's only when we talk to someone else and we talk out our fears or our thoughts about something that we can truly hear what we're thinking. Yeah. We, otherwise, we don't know. We, do, we don't hear what we're thinking. We just might be on a, a, a continual loop of something yeah. that going round and round in our brain. But unless we speak it out, it's so valuable to be able to hear yourself think, yes. if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It helped me to realize how, how unreal some of the fears I had were. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's the thing when you start to look at the fears when we challenge ourselves to to confront some of these fears, they disappear. Yeah. They just simply melt away, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and that's really what we're talking about here on this this whole podcast of five simple ways of just letting go of some of those fears. Like we said about the, the sack on our back with yes. all those rocks in. Yeah. If you got rid of 90% of them, how amazing would that feel? Exactly. Yeah, we do tend to walk around with this rucksack full of doubts fears anxieties Mm. and we just go on and on and really all we need to do is put it down yeah bit by bit yeah and also perhaps remember that you're not alone yeah whatever you have as a fear i guarantee someone else has has got a similar fear yeah my partner has the fear of, of spiders except he actually went to australia for a whole year to which i said how did you manage to survive and he said i just didn't think about it Mm mm-hmm Mm. Yet when he sees a spider in the house, he'll call me to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so be patient with yourself. F- 
face your fears whenever possible. Talk it through with a friend and be kind to yourself. Yes. And that way, releasing some of those fears will create you more happiness. Guaranteed. Steph and Sheila guaranteed. Absolutely. Yes. (laughs) So we've come to the end of our episode today. But have you enjoyed it? Please leave us a review if you wouldn't if you wouldn't mind. (laughs) You can leave a review on Apple Podcasts or you can leave a rating on Spotify. What this does, it really helps our podcast to gain more visibility, which is very, very important so we can spread more happiness, uh, create more happiness. And uh, have you got any experience with fears? We would really love to hear it. So do get in touch. You can find us on our website, www.creatinghappinesspodcast.com. And you can email us at info at creatinghappinesspodcast.com. So, yeah. Yeah, do drop us a line. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. Yes. And I just wanted to shout out to Ralph and... Tracy and Sheila. Yes. Thank you so much for your donation. Um, you can, if you want to support uh, Creating Happiness, you can donate us a coffee or two. On, That'd be amazing. Yeah, you can find yeah. the donation button on our website at the bottom of the page. So it really helps us to get the podcast into a better and better shape. So thank you so much for your donations. And thank you for listening. Thank you I'll for see listening. see you next week. And in the meantime, have a happy and carefree day. <laughs>